Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Inside Tech. Today, we will be taking a first look at the very promising Opera 10.5. We'll also take an in-depth look at what Sony is up to for the PS3. PSN Premium? Let's get this one started. The Opera 10.5 Pre-Alpha was recently released and I have had a few days to play with it and form an opinion. It's good. Really good. A minor bump from 10 to 10.5 doesn't look like much on paper, but actually using the browser is a different story. This is honestly the only time I've ever been tempted to switch to Opera, as 10.5 is one of the best browser packages around right now. Among the changes from version 10 is a much cleaner, sleeker interface that is strikingly similar to Chrome, which is my opinion the current benchmark for clean browser interfaces. The tabs are now integrated into the top of the browser, removing the top options panel and status bar and hiding them neatly in a red opera drop down menu, which looks much sleeker and frees up quite a bit of valuable screen real estate. Windows 7 integration is a big part of the upgrade as well, as it now incorporates arrow glass throughout the top tab bar, as well as tab preview support, meaning that individual tabs show up as windows in the taskbar, as well as jump list support. The aesthetic improvements are enough to warrant the 10.5 moniker, but the changes are more than skin deep, as Opera 10.5 now uses a new JavaScript engine known as Kraken. Opera claims that it's seven times faster than the engine in Opera 10, and I can believe it. The added speed is easily apparent in simple, day-to-day -day web browsing. Where Opera used to trail behind the pack in speed, it now runs with the best of them. My main browser is on Chrome 4, and after running some informal speed tests between the two, it's plain that they are very close speed-wise. Running benchmarks backs this up. They seem neck and neck through most. In SunSpider, Opera 10.5 narrowly edged out Chrome 4, which says a lot considering the Chrome runs circles around Opera 10. Using Mozilla's Dromeo JavaScript testing suite, Opera also edged out Chrome, although again by a fairly small margin. Using Celtic Kane's JavaScript benchmark, Chrome won by a decent amount, 242 to 199. Lastly, using the V8 benchmark, which I will note was compiled by Google, Chrome won by a fair margin as well. There might not be a clear winner, but that's not a problem. Opera 10.5, no matter how you test it, is leaps and bounds ahead of its predecessor. Between the addition of a clever private browsing mode that allows you to run private tabs next to standard ones, the excellent new interface, and the raw speed that is enough to bring it up to par with the fastest browser available. One thing stands out in my mind. This shouldn't be called Opera 10.5. This should be Opera 20 for all the enhancement that they have made. You can download and try out Opera 10.5 for yourself right now if you're curious. The link will be in the description. Do note that it's a pre-alpha release that's quite prone to crashes and glitches. For example, widgets don't seem to work very well right now. But nothing has broken on me yet, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> Opera really is looking fantastic, and I won't be surprised a bit if this latest release wins a good share of new users. Hey guys, Jake here from the Jailbreak Nation, and welcome to the Gamers Corner. Now recently there has been um, rumors, which could or could not be totally fake, um, that have been surfacing lately about a PSN premium service similar to that of Xbox Live. For those of you that don't know, PSN stands for PlayStation Network, a totally free online option that comes with the PS3. It is basically the same as Xbox Live, the Xbox 360's variant, except that Live has a hefty price tag on it. So basically the rumors say that supposedly Sony has been conducting surveys about what people want to see in a PSN premium service. Now we all know that Sony is terrible at keeping their secrets, just look at the PSP Go at E3, but somewhere, somehow, the results to these surveys got out. On it, there is a list of features that could or could not appear on a subscription service for PSN. Some of these features are actually really, really cool. There is stuff like access to beta games, uh, full title trial where the first hour for a game is free, 
um, member only in game content, an online music and movie service, and cross game voice chat. The list goes on and on. Now, I must say, as a PS3 owner, some of these things are really needed. Cross game voice chat would be amazing. The Xbox 360 has it, and why doesn't the PS3? Access to games and beta testing would also be an incredibly neat feature, and so would a music store. If you want a full list of all the features listed in the survey, you can check them out in the more info section next to this video on the right, or if you're watching this on Duncan3303's channel, uh, it should be below. According to the survey, for a yearly subscription, it is said to range from $20 to $60, or a month to month one for about $6 to $9. But the main question that Sony have been asking is will people buy it? Will people jump at the option of a PS3 premium service? My answer, as a PS3 owner, I say yes. I will definitely go out and buy this. The features outlined just seem too good to turn down. If the rumours do seem to come true, and Sony reveals it, I am sure it will be a huge success, as good as the current service is. And before I end my segment guys, I'd just like to say Merry Christmas to you all, and um, a Happy New Year. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace. And that's it for this episode of Inside Tech. Be sure to subscribe to keep you up to date with all the latest tech news. Big thanks as always to the Jailbreak Nation, and we will catch you later. Have a happy holidays, guys!